Hey everyone, welcome to the second installment of my two-part series. If you haven't watched the first video on the Sun and Moon totems, I highly recommend doing so before diving into this one. There will be a few recurring strategies and it's honestly one of the better videos I've made. For those unfamiliar with totem Pokemon, they are basically a new type of boss battle. These are regular Pokemon, but bigger, and each one of them gets a stat boost at the start of the battle. They can also call upon allies, but that's a feature we won't see. I'll KO the totem Pokemon before they get a chance to look for help. My objective to one-shot every totem Pokemon on the first turn was sometimes already quite hard to fulfill in the Sun and Moon games. Nearly every totem Pokemon has received a buff, so I'm very curious if things are gonna get even more grindy this time around. I will still try my best to stay true to my original goal. Figuring out the easiest and most effortless way to Oko the totem Pokemon on the first turn. Before I start, let me explain some basic rules I set for myself. I can only use Pokemon that are legally obtainable. I can't trade with other games. Island scan is allowed. I will only make use of EV training if it's necessary. Z moves are allowed. There will be level caps based on the totem's level, otherwise I can just over level and overpower everything. And finally, every one shot I do needs to be guaranteed and my Pokemon needs to be alive at the end of the battle. Even if my Pokemon has a 99% chance to Oko, I will not count it. Some notable calcs will be mentioned though. Let's not wait any longer and quickly get past the first two totems. I'm starting with Pokemon Ultra Moon because I'll need a version exclusive Pokemon later on in Pokemon Ultra Sun. Luckily, only the first totem is different between the two games. And Ultra Moon has the easiest one by a long shot. Alolan Redicate has a quadruple weakness to fighting types and there is an abundance of them in the wild right before the island trial. There are only a few straightforward requirements that need to be met for this encounter. The fighting type Pokemon Pokemon needs at least 21 attack with a black belt from Wild Makuhita equipped or 25 attack without the health item to Oko the Alolan Radicate. And it needs to know Brick Break from TM number 31, which is found during the island trial. Game Freak really wanted the player to breeze through this one. The three candidates are mostly the same from part 1. Crabrawler and Mankey make a return, but since the Machop trait has been changed, the more powerful Haulucha will take its place. I decided not to mention Makuhita since these three are more optimal options, but don't worry, it will get the spotlight in a minute. Crabrawler and Mankey reach the benchmark of 21 attack at level 12 very easily, even with zero IVs in attack and a nature that lowers it even further. The traded Haulucha has 31 IVs in attack by default and the brave nature increases it even further so it will always have the maximum possible amount of attack. You can just obtain it from the trade, immediately give it Brick Break and go to town on Radicate. These results aren't surprising, even with Radicate's defense boost. Gumshoes will require a bit more effort to take down in one hit. Switching over to Pokemon Ultra Sun. I forced myself through the unnecessarily long tutorial again. Thank you emulator speedup, you are a godsend. And I get myself a Makuhita on Route 2. Now, Makuhita surprisingly has a lower base attack stat compared to the other available fighting types. But it has a trick up its sleeve. Guts. When inflicted with a status condition, Makuhita's current attack stat is increased by 50%. I have two versions of Makuhita that can one-shot the Totem Gumshoes. Both of them have the Adamant Nature, the Guts ability, a Black Belt as a health item that you can get from Wild Makuhita, and the Poison status that I got from a Wild Grimer. Then there are two major differences between them. The first Makuhita will use Brick Break with 28 attack to one-shot Gumshoes, while the the second one will try to do the same with arm trust and 26 attack. Both of them require quite a bit of EV training. The Makuhita with Brick Break even more than the one with arm trust. 
how much it depends on the nature and IVs, so I can't exactly tell you how many Pikipeks and Yungus you need to KO. There is no Pokemon that has more power than a guts boosted Makuhita at this point in the game. So I have to deal with the unreliable Arm Trust or the guaranteed grindy Brick Break. Arm Trust does have a chance to deal a critical hit on each hit, which deals more damage and ignores Gumshoes' defense boost on top of it. If I want to strictly follow the rules I set for myself, then Makuhita with Brick Break is the go-to strategy. It's quite annoying to reach the 28 attack to guarantee the Oko, but it can be done, so I will count it as a win. Finally, after having defeated the first totem Pokemon, I can get off Tutorial Island. Oh wait, wrong game. I meant Mele Mele Island. The second island trial has a new totem in the Ultra games. Instead of Wishy Washy, Araquanit is the water type totem. It comes equipped with a Wakanberry, which weakens electric type attacks. I was hoping to reuse the Pikachu plus Electro Ball strategy, but the berry ruins it. Even getting the QR code exclusive Pikachu with its own Z-Stone isn't enough to Oko Araquanit. Apparently 10 million volts isn't enough to fry this bug. Another notable shift between games is the availability of the Flyinium Z. Normally you would only be able to get this after receiving the Machamp ride in the late game, but the Ultra games don't require it, so it's immediately accessible after gaining access to the Tauros ride that's locked behind defeating the first Kahuna. This means I can use a Z-move for the first time in this video and it's super effective too. One very notable Pokemon that can one-shot Raquanit is the traded Haulucha. Like I said earlier, this guy is always going to have the highest possible attack at its level. The strongest move for Haulucha at this point is the tutor move Bounce. A few more tutor moves will appear later in the video and the currency is always farmed by spamming the Mantine surfing minigame. Bounce costs 8 BP, which didn't take very long to get. With Bounce Start, Haulucha uses the power of the Flyinium Z to one-shot the Totem Araquanit with Super Sonic Sky Strike. Another Pokemon that can easily Oko Araquanit is Salamence with Aerial Ace and the Flyinium Z. It doesn't need any EV training with a positive attack nature, but it's quite rare, so I prefer to use Haulucha. The next totem is Alolan Marowak. Compared to Salazzle, Marowak is much more of a threat. It's bulkier, holds a tick club that doubles its attack, it has decent coverage, the aura boost sharply raises its speed, and wait, oh no, it has detect? For those unaware, the AI in these games will use Protect-like moves at random. If Marowak in this case uses Detect, my Z-move will be weakened to the point where it deals less than half of its HP. There is one way to trick the AI into using an offensive move though. If I enter the battle with a weakened Pokemon, the AI will always try to deal the final blow to my low health Pokemon. I can let my own Pokemon get damaged before starting the trial, or I can let it happen in a mandatory battle that happens during the trial. Wishiwashi and Araquanit would have made a return from part 1, but they do not outspeed Marowak, they just get KO'd at low HP. I had to find something that can outspeed Marowak and also has the power to Oko it. After doing a bit more research, I found out that Starmie is obtainable shortly before the trial. It seems to be the only Pokemon strong and fast enough to meet my requirements. To make this even more complicated, I can't simply catch a Staryu and evolve it. Water stones aren't available at this point in the game. Only through SOS calls from Wild Staryu can I attempt to catch a Starmie. After catching a Starmie, I need to spam Mantine Surfing again to farm BP for Water Pulse, since Starmie doesn't learn any water moves without a move reminder. The TM4 Scald that was previously available in Brooklet Hill has been moved to Pony Island in the Ultra games. A Z-powered Water Pulse is my best option now. I wish I could have used Wishiwashi in this battle. It requires no effort to train up, unlike Starmie. 
who needs at least 28 IVs in its special attack and maxed out EVs in the same stat to reach the required 75 special attack to one-shot Marowak. After a heavy grinding session, Starmie Okos the Alolan Marowak by powering up Water Pulse with the Water AMZ into Hydro Vortex. The mighty Laurentis has received two buffs and a nerf in the Ultra Games. 64 EVs that were previously allocated to its special attack are now invested in its special defense, making it bulkier. It now knows low sweep instead of razor relief, but its impish nature got changed to bolt, which lowers its attack stat. The Magmar strategy from part 1 still works on this thing, but it needs a bit more special attack now to get the guaranteed Oko, 66 to be exact. EV training is not necessary depending on the nature and IVs. It's only possible to get Magmar through Wild Magby's SOS calls. Magby only evolves at level 30, so I can't just catch one and evolve it because of the level 24 level cap. When the requirements are met, Magmar can power up its Flame Burst with the Farium Z into Inferno Overdrive to one-shot the Totem Laurentis. The early availability of the Flyinium Z in these games opens up new possibilities for Pokémon capable of Okoing Laurentis. Salamence, Haolucha and Gyarados are all strong new users of this Z-Crystal. Haolucha and Gyarados in particular can learn Bounce from the Move Tutor on this island, while Salamence is stuck with the weaker Aerial Ace. To Oko Laurentis, Haolucha and Gyarados need at least 62 attack. Gyarados can reach this very easily, even with 0 IVs in attack and a neutral nature. Haolucha, on the other hand, only needs 8 EVs into its attack stat, which just happens naturally by playing through the game. As for the much more uncommon Salamence, depending on the IVs and nature, EV training is not necessary. Pretty straightforward for these flying types, huh? So they utilize their respective move and the Flyunium Z to blast away Laurentis with Supersonic Sky Strike. Okay, instead of running away from Nihiligo as a joke, I will tell you an actual strategy to one-shot it. Nihiligo gets a sharp boost in its defense, which is its lowest stat. This makes it a lot harder for the very common physical ground type attackers to one-shot it. Its physical defense is still lower than its special defense, so I had to look for the strongest physical ground type attacker that was available to me. I came across Mudbray with 100 base attack and the 95 BP high horsepower as its strongest move. One thing about high horsepower though is the 95% accuracy. Luckily, I can boost this number with the zoom lens to make it a guaranteed hit. You can obtain this item from the Dimensional Research Lab in Hea Hea City. Despite Nahe Ligo's impressive special attack at this stage in the game, it isn't backed up by a strong attack, so Mudbray is safe from getting KO'd itself. With high horsepower recently learned, Mudbray can Oko Nahe Ligo. Togedomaru is another new totem Pokémon in the Ultra games and oh boy, is it a tanky one. Apparently this spiky ball is one of the harder totems in the game. It goes all out on physical defense with a bold nature, max EVs and IVs in HP and defense, and a sharp boost at the start of the battle in, you guessed it, defense. On top of its massive physical bulk, Togedomaru has some pretty strong att- Wait, what do I see there? Spiky shield? What the f was Game Freak thinking with giving these Pokemon protect like moves? Anyways, just like the Totem Marowak, you can trick it into using an attack by putting your Pokemon in KO range. Totem Togunomaru is a pretty quick Pokemon. I need something that can hit its significantly lower special defense. On the top of my head, I can't think of any fast special ground type attackers. Luckily, there's a physical ground type Pokemon that can do this instead. Alolan Ductrio is the chosen one to get me past this challenge. You are probably thinking to yourself, of course it's Ductrio, it's one of the fastest ground type Pokemon in the game, and you're correct. But can it hit through Togedomaru's physical bulk? Well, no. Instead, I will use Ductrio's special attack to hit Togedomaru's low special defense. 
It's the only Pokemon at this point in the game that can learn Earth Power, an ATBP and 100% accurate ground type move. To pull this off, Ductrio needs to have Soft Sand equipped and at least 43 special attack, which is actually quite easy to reach without any EV training. Having a modest nature and low IVs got me there without any issues. Soft Sand can be found in Mele Mele Sea, Konikoni City and on many wild Pokemon, including Diglett. So yeah. As you can see, Totem Togonomaru was surprisingly easy to defeat on the first turn. Let's see who's next. Well, well, well. It's good to see you again, Mimikyu. Last time, I had to go through a convoluted process to prepare a Rampardus in Pokemon Sun. I needed to find a male Exu, true island scan that new Iron Tail and breed it with a female Cranidos to pass it down as an egg move. Then equipped with the Stelium Z, I was able to Oko Mimikyu. The preparation work won't take as long in the Ultra games. As I mentioned earlier, a few move tutors were added throughout the region. So it's back to Mantine surfing baby! I teach my Rampardos Iron Tail with the BP I earned and give it the Stelium Z that I got from the previous trial. Rampardos in the first set of games was strong enough to Oko Mimikyu without any EV training, but Mimikyu got buffed in its defenses. Now Rampardos needs at least 150 attack. This sounds like an insane amount, but don't forget that this big dude has one of the highest base attack stats in the game. Only a bit of EV training is needed with high IVs. Honestly though, if I am being strict with the rules I set for myself, then Rampardos should actually be further EV trained until it has enough defense or HP to survive a critical hit from play rough. Mimikyu will most likely use this move and on top of having a chance to Oko as a critical hit, it can also lower Rampardos' attack. It only has a 10% chance of happening and Mimikyu is not even guaranteed to land player ref, but the chance of the one shot failing exists. If player ref misses or its effect doesn't activate, then Rampardos safely one shots the totem Mimikyu with Corkscrew Crash. There was one totem Pokemon in the previous games I couldn't quite figure out. Komoo returns in the Ultra games with some changes to its fight. Most importantly, it lost access to Protect, but it has the fairy type attack weakening Rosalie Berry now, so I can't make use of the quadruple weakness anymore. The Omni Boost is still present, so I'll be needing raw, super effective power to take this bulky dragon down in one hit. Komo's defense is 9 points lower than its special defense, so I had a look at the strongest physical attackers that were available to me. I ended up having to resort to two Pokemon that have above 135 base attack, Salamence and Archeops. Salamence is the first one I'll be looking at and it will be a grindy entry. During SOS battles with Wild Bagan, there is a 1% chance of a low level Salamence appearing as backup. Now this already powerful dragon needs to be EV trained to reach an attack stat of 201. This is only possible with a nature that boosts attack. Maxed out EVs in attack and also 31 IVs in the same stat. Basically the maximum amount of attack it can possibly get at the level cap. At least the move Salamence will use isn't super difficult to get. Just talk to this NPC in Mali library to get the TM4 fly. I think you can already guess which Z crystal is making an appearance again. Once maximum power has been achieved, I slap a Flyinium Z on Salamence to one shot Komoo with supersonic sky strike. Then onto the second Pokemon, Archeops. It's an Ultra Moon exclusive Pokemon, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Just like Salamence, it also needs 201 attack, but Archeops' base attack is slightly higher, so there's a bit of leeway with the IVs. Another thing that Archeops has over Salamence is speed, so much so that it can outspeed Komoo if there are enough EVs invested. And finally, a Z-powered fly is also Archeops' way of one-shotting Komoo. That's another entry for Flyunium Z users. Next up should be Totem Ribambi, but I decided to include Ultra Necrozma. 
I spent so much time looking into this thing. Ultra Necrozma isn't like the average totem Pokemon I've been fighting throughout the videos. This monster is very infamous for being able to Oko the majority of the Pokedex. And it's so bulky that it can survive super effective stab Z moves with over 150 BP. In my original playthrough many years ago, I couldn't even get past it without toxic stalling. I really don't understand what Game Freak's thought process was by making you battle a Pokemon that has a higher stat total than Arceus, a 50% stat boost in everything except HP, insane coverage and an EV spread to make it even more bulky. All of that in their most handholdy game at that point in time. Alright, I'll stop complaining. I just went through too many calculations and Pokemon to finally get an answer to my question. Can Ultra Necrozma be one shot on the first turn. Let's activate the island scan feature to find out. This is gonna be a complicated process, so please bear with me. First, I scan a few QR codes from the internet to fill my Pokedex. Each QR code gives me a few points to charge the island scan and once I have collected enough points, I go to Akala outskirts on a Wednesday. Yes, the day is very important. I activate the island scan and catch a wild hone edge. I evolve it into Dublate at level 35 and look for a Dusk Stone in the Pony Wilds. I use it on Dublate to evolve it into Eggy Slash and then grind it to level 60, the level cap for this fight. I chose Eggy Slash because it is the strongest special attacker with 150 base special attack. Necrozma's special defense is 30 points lower than its physical defense, so it's a no-brainer to look for special attackers. Eggy Slash also resists all of Necrozma's attacks. Even with all of the extra power it gets during this fight, Necrozma can not Oko Eggy Slash in any way. Now, let's see what the criteria is to beat Ultra Necrozma with Eggy Slash. Investing 252 EVs in special attack is mandatory and the same counts for having high IVs in that same stat. With TM30 that I got near the Ghost Trial, I teach Eggy Slash Shadow Ball and equip the Ghost Team. Z. With this, I'm pretty much set for Ultra Necrozma. At the start of the battle, Necrozma will, of course, outspeed Eggy Slash and act first. Then it's Eggy Slash's turn to boost its Shadow Ball with the Ghost Gym Z to the 160 BP never ending nightmare, which Oko's Ultra Necrozma without a single issue. It's crazy to find out that there is a way to one shot Ultra Necrozma. This boss doesn't have the best reputation in the Pokemon community because of its insane difficulty spike. I started to believe there was nothing that could Oko it after hours of looking. I'm glad it got a successful outcome. Finally, I'm at the last totem. I thought Rebombi was believed to be the most difficult totem Pokemon in the Ultra games. But according to you all, it's still Mimikyu. Rebombi gets a sharp Omni boost, effectively doubling all of its stats, except HP. Surprisingly, it's also the totem Pokemon that has the most Oko possibilities. I have chosen to stick with physical attackers, because it really likes to start the first turn by using Quiver Dance. Special attackers have no chance to one-shot it. I won't be analyzing more than three Pokemon though. I can go over every single possible option, but we have already been going for quite a while. And I don't want to make this video too long. Fire types won't be making an appearance, since Rebombi comes equipped with an Okaberry to weaken the super effective attacks. The first of the bunch is to Cannon, with its signature move Beak Blast and a minimum of 193 attacks it can one-shot Rebombi with the help of a Flyinium Z. It's not that simple though, of course, since Rebombi's stats are incredibly high, training EVs is needed and this counts for every Pokemon. In Toucanon's case, it's not only in attack, but also special defense. Otherwise, if Rebombi manages to land a critical hit with Dazzling Gleam, it's game over for Toucanon. 
moving on to the second Pokemon, Metagross. I think you can already imagine how much damage a Z-boosted Meteor Mesh would do to Rebombi. Well, not enough to one-shot it without any EV investments. Metagross needs at least 198 attack to Oko Rebombi with Corkscrew Crash. Also, just like to Cannon, it can get KO'd first by a critical attack. So, investing in special defense is necessary to meet the requirements I set for myself at the beginning of the video. Alolan Muk, the third entry, is also a very solid Pokémon to take on Rebombi with. Out of the three Pokémon, it's the only one that can survive a critical hit with minimal investments into its defenses. In other words, just by grinding some levels, Muk will have enough bulk to survive a critical hit. Though, one thing you need to watch out for is that it can't have less than 22 IVs in attack. It won't be able to reach the required attack stat of 183 otherwise. With the Poisonium Z equipped, Muk can power up its gunk shot to Oko the Rebombi with Acid Downpour. Alright, we are nearing the end of the video. Let's see the results. I have faced 9 totem Pokemon, 1 Ultra Beast and the penultimate boss of the game, Ultra Necrozma. In total, that's 11 fights. This time around, I managed to Oko every totem Pokemon. In the first set of games, Komo was a 50-50 situation, but I learned from some very smart viewers that the AI won't go for protect-like moves if your Pokémon is in KO range. It's too bad that Mimikyu is still only beatable with the Ultra Sun exclusive Rampardos. The other possible options just weren't viable. Nahiligo's biggest weakness, the run button, couldn't be a repeat joke in this video. Luckily, there is at least one Pokemon capable of taking advantage of its insane ground type weakness. And then that leaves us with Ultra Necrozma. I am so happy that I found a way to one-shot this monstrosity. Researching this subject was an absolute blast. There are other Pokemon games that have a similar concept to the Totem Pokemon, like Noble Pokemon in Legends Arceus and Titan Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. I might dive into these games with the same goal as this video. Before I wrap up the video, please do me a solid. Like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Pokemon content like this. I also make community posts that you can participate in. They usually play a part in my upcoming video. Plus, I always try to drop hints about what's coming next. It's time for me to go now. Until next time and have a good one.